there are five healthy lifestyle-related factors that are associated with an increased life expectancy. And the beginning of that story is here, with data for women on the left and men on the right. For women who followed all five factors, they had an average life expectancy gain of 43 years. And when added to life expectancy at 50 years, they had an average or an estimated life expectancy of 93 years. For men that followed all five factors, they had an average life, ex life expectancy gain of 38 years. And when added to life expectancy at 50 years, had an estimated life expectancy of 88 years. Now, the average life expectancy in 2018 for women was 81, and for men, it was 76. So from these data, we can see that men and women who followed all five healthy lifestyle-related factors had about a 12-year increase in life ex or expected life expectancy. So that brings us to what are the five lifestyle factors? And then, digging deeper, what are the underlying mechanisms? And that's potentially important because if we know the underlying mechanisms and pathways, can they be tracked and further optimized? So first, for the five factors that were associated with life expectancy, they were not smoking or never smoking, physical activity, which was defined as greater than or equal to 30 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous physical activity, an average of 30 minutes per day, the normal BMI, which was defined as 18.5 to 24.9 kilograms per meter squared, Notice that that doesn't include what's defined as overweight, which is 25 to 29.9, or obese, which is greater than 30 for BMI. Moderate alcohol intake, which was 5 to 15 grams per day for women, 5 to 30 grams per day for men, and then a healthy diet. And that, that, that's a big box, right? So what does that actually mean and how is it defined? So for this study, it was defined as the top 40% for the AHEI score, the Alternative Healthy Eating Index score. All right, so what does that mean? What's included on that healthy Alternative Healthy Eating Index? And we can see that list here. There are nine components, and it includes vegetables, fruit, nuts, and soy protein, the ratio of white meat to red meat. White meat can include fish, cereal fiber, trans fat as a uh, percentage of energy intake, P to S ratio, which is polyunsaturated fats divided by saturated fatty acid intake, duration of multivitamin use, and alcohol in servings per day. And it, this, to me, seems like it's double dipping because alcohol was already included as one of the other lifestyle factors. Nonetheless, to get a maximum score of 10 for each of these components, for example, one would need to eat five servings of vegetables per day, four servings of fruits per day, one serving of nuts, or soy protein, and so on down the list. Now, conversely, a minimum score of zero would be for people who didn't consume any vegetables or any fruit, no nuts or soy protein, more red meat than white meat, and so on down the list. And then there is a gradient of scoring for people who consumed a few servings of vegetables, but not five, a few servings of fruit, but not four, to generate the overall AHEI score. And then the top 40% scores were considered a healthy diet. All right, so now that we know the five lifestyle factors, what are the underlying mechanisms or pathways that may underlie why these five lifestyle factors may be associated with an increased life expectancy gain? And if we know the underlying mechanisms, will tracking and potentially optimizing further lead to an increased life expectancy? That's the goal. So for that, we go to a second study, which looked at plasma metabolites of a healthy lifestyle which they looked at the healthy lifestyle factors, those five, in relation to mortality and longevity. In this case, longevity was defined as living older than 85 years or the odds of living past 85 years. So in terms of the overall setup, the study included more than 11,000 people with an average age of 54 years and a 28-year follow-up. So starting from the initial biomarker assessment, who was still alive and who had died up to 28 years later. So then starting with the five lifestyle factors that were associated with life expectancy, those were combined into a healthy lifestyle score. That score was then associated with 243 different circulating plasma metabolites. And then those metabolites were grouped into their metabolite classes. Now, most of these metabolite classes are lipid-derived. For example, plasmalogens, sphingolipids, these are lipids, lipid-containing uh, metabolites. But amino acids are on the list and nucleosides are uh, 
another uh, component, another metabolite class that are non-lipid that are on this list. But the majority of metabolites were evalu- evaluated were lipid-derived. All right, so then they derived a five-factor healthy metabolite signature or, or a five-factor healthy lifestyle metabolite signature. So what are the metabolites that are associated with the five-factor healthy lifestyle score? And then how good is that signature, right? So if the signature isn't associated with mortality risk or the odds of living, living past 85 years, well, it's not very important. So they evaluated that in the study. And in terms of what's significant, we put up a red line at that hazard ratio, HR of one. And we, here we can see that the five-factor healthy lifestyle metabolite signature was associated with a lower risk of all-cause cardiovascular disease and cancer-related mortality. And then in terms of longevity, again, this is the odds of living past uh, 85 years. That five-factor healthy lifestyle score metabolite signature, the metabolites that were associated with that five-factor score, was associated with an increased odds of living past 85 years or having an increased life expectancy relative to the average life expectancy. So taken together, we can see that the healthy lifestyle metabolite signature is associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk and an increased odds of living past 85 years. So now that we know that, which metabolites and metabolite classes were associated with the healthy lifestyle score? And again, if we know the metabolites, they can potentially be tracked and optimized with the goal of minimizing all-cause mortality risk and potentially increasing our odds of living past 85 years. So first, let's start off with metabolite groups that were associated with a higher healthy lifestyle score. And that's what we can see here. And we can see that two metabolite groups, cholesterol, cholesterol or cholesterol, it's hard to say, cholesterol, esters, and phosphatidylcholine-containing plasmalogens, you can see those stars. That means that both of these two metabolite classes, relatively higher levels, were associated with a higher five-factor healthy lifestyle score. So for those who may not be familiar, I covered cholesterol esters in an earlier video, but what are they? And we can see one of them illustrated here structurally. So it's simply cholesterol bound to a fatty acid. In this case, it's the 22 carbon six double bond fatty acid, otherwise known as EPA, which is found in fish oil. And together, this forms the 22 six cholesterol ester or CE 22 six. All right, so which cholesterol esters were associated with a higher healthy lifestyle score? It's one thing to know the metabolite classes, but those classes are comprised of metabolites. And we can see the five cholesterol esters shown here. So this table's got the metabolites, again, five cholesterol esters, the beta coefficient, and you can see each of these are positive. Uh, and it's also got the 95% confidence interval, but we can see that each of these are greater than uh, zero, which means that relatively higher levels of these metabolites was associated with a higher healthy lifestyle score. And then the p-value, we can see that each of these is far below a p-value of 0.05. So each of these metabolites was significantly associated with the health, healthy lifestyle score. Now, note that each of these five cholesterol esters can indeed be tracked and potentially optimized. And to do that, I've been using Iolo's at-home metabolomics kit, which besides the cholesterol esters shown here, They include data for more than 600 metabolites. And if you want to track your own cholesterol esters and a whole bunch of other metabolites, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. So that brings us to what's my data. And we can see that here with data for the five cholesterol esters on the left, six tests we can see across the top column. And five of those tests were in 2023. So when taking the average of the sum of these cholesterol esters, the average for these five is 271 micromolar. Now, when considering that relatively higher levels of these cholesterol esters were associated with a higher healthy lifestyle score, which was associated with a lower all-cause mortality risk and a greater odds of living past 85 years, I would want to have, and we would want to have, relatively higher levels of cholesterol esters and avoid any age-related decline. So with that in mind, test number six was the first test in 2024. And unfortunately, off to a bad start. We can see that about 180 micromolar is uh, lower than 271. So I don't want to have an age-related decline or any kind of decline. I want to keep them relatively high towards the, towards the higher end of my range to gain any of the potential mortality risk reduction or uh, longevity benefits. And notice I said potential. Correlation does not imply causation. But this is only half the story. 
because there were also metabolite groups where lower levels were associated with the higher healthy lifestyle score. And we can see that here. And there were two metabolite classes that that was true, diglycerides or diacylglycerols and specific triglycerides. No, notice that all triglycerides aren't homogeneous in terms of the fatty acids that they contain, as triglycerides, by definition, contain three fatty acids. So in this case, triglycerides that contained less than 56 carbons and less than three double bonds, so relatively shorter chain fatty acids and less unsaturated, was associated, uh, well, having lower levels was associated with a higher healthy lifestyle, uh, healthy lifestyle score. So that doesn't tell us though which diglycerides and which triglycerides. And that's what we'll cover in a future video. Also, we'll take a look at what's my data to see how well that I'm doing, just like we did for the cholesterol esters. And then potentially more importantly, how can we keep levels of either cholesterol levels high or these specific diglycerides and triglycerides relatively low? So one way that I do that is by tracking diet. So is diet or other factors correlated with higher cholesterol esters and lower levels of these diglycerides and specific triglycerides? So stay tuned for that in an upcoming video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, epigenetic and telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, NED quantification, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB and now GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.